remember we were uh, did did we finish that problem with the the curved pipe and the and the uh, and the plane the the, the uh, horizontal plane there. So let's let's look at that one. And make sure we got the right number. This was x, y, and z, and we had this curved pipe. that lay right in the plane, the xy plane. What's so fun? Right about like that. And then it was attached by a rope that had a known tension in it and that attachment was Uh, on that uh, XZ wall. Is that right? That was the deal? I think put a couple numbers to it. Uh, this was, this was a three-quarter or a one-quarter circular pipe. So it lay in a square three meters by three meters. And then this little part here was an extra meter. I went down by two meters and the Tension was 80 newtons, and we're trying to we're trying to figure out the moment about the origin because that's where it's mounted. And if we were going to check to make sure we mount it well enough, we're going to need to know the moment. <coughs> uh, we're not too worried about the force there because this force is kind of pulling it into the wall, so that helps. But it's pulling it down the wall a little bit, so you have to make sure that, that it also resists the forces if we were trying to do this. But we were just trying to figure out the moment about that point O. How do we do that? Oh, see the light wasn't on. I didn't know Alan was here because he wore black again. Yeah. So how do we find the moment? Uh, cross product. Cross, cross product always works. It may simplify to something else, but it will always work for us, especially in a three-dimensional problem. Uh, it's about the only way to do it. So we need those two vectors to put into our three by three matrix. So we need the R0 vector. Now what vector is that? Remember? What's the R0 vector? I, I guess it's RO in this case. It's O for origin. From the moment anywhere on the line of action of force. Not from the moment, more specifically from from whatever this point is. It happens to be the origin, but might not be. Maybe we want to figure it out about some other point, as we'll do later today. Uh, but it locates the force relative to whatever that point is. It happens to be the origin. That's just where I laid things out when I, when I did the picture. To where on the force? The tail, the head, anywhere on the line of action of the force. So in the picture, it certainly is easy to go anywhere all the way along that line. Anywhere along that line. Uh, I guess I've named this point C, maybe? Uh, oh, and this was point A, if I remember. So anywhere along that line A to C, or anywhere if you want to extend it farther, but that gets a little difficult because you you know, your estimate. But this is this is real easy. This is geometry. So so what what R zero should we use? Something you know. Something it doesn't matter. It's the, the easier the better. The easier we could go to the midpoint, but we're gonna have to pick that and everything else is point A is great, point C is great because they're right off the geometry. Either one. So, Trevor Raptor, you get to choose. A. A? So we'll do point A. So, 
the uh, vector to point A. Let's see, in the x direction, so that vector is going to start at the or start at our point of interest, happens to be the origin, go to the point A. So that's our R0. You can even put R0A if you want to be specific. Um, so that goes, uh, how much in the x direction? Three meters. Three meters in the x direction? Any dispute? You know, these three dimensional pictures, some people see them better than others. Some drawings of them are better than others, so make sure you get the right thing. Point A is three meters down the x-axis. J. Also three meters. Now I said this was a quarter turn of circular pipe, so it's the same on those sides. Three meters. And K? I have minus two meters, I have zero, I have an intense frown. Go oh, careful, your face will lock in that position. What? Zero. Because remember, the, the pipe itself lays in the plane, in the xy plane. So point A is right in that plane itself, so that's zero. And has the unit, that whole vector has units of meters. Every, every one of the components is in meters. Uh, if you can pick such that one of the components is zero, it does start to clean things up a little bit. I mean, it's always nice to multiply by zero, especially when negative signs are involved. Um, and then the force itself. We need the force vector itself. Now, we don't have that, so we have to come up with that. We need the force vector itself. Uh, we know that geometry where the rope points, but that's not the force vector. That's just the geometry where the rope points, where the rope goes from one point to the other. But we do know its magnitude and its units, and we can figure out what direction it lays in. If we can figure out the unit vector, oops, unit vector, Remember, we have a special sign for unit vectors. If we can find, find out the unit vector that goes from A to C, that's going to be the same direction as the force vector itself. And from A to C. If we can figure out what that is. Can we do that? It'd be nice if we could. We just put it in there and we have the force vector. We can do that because we know the vector, the position vector A to C itself, it starts here and it goes down there. That's the geometry, the actual geometry. And that's got equal to the total distance or the magnitude between A and C in the right direction from A to C. That's the madness of my notation here. Well, that's the very unit vector we're looking for. So if we can solve for that, we can put it in there, wrap things up. So we'll solve for this. If I know the vector A to C, and I divide that vector by the magnitude A to C, then I get the unit vector in the A to C direction, which, nicely for us, is the exact same unit vector that I need for the force. Because the force lies along that very same line, even in the very same direction. Start with, what's the vector that goes from point A to point C? And that's an actual geometric vector. It actually goes from point A to point C. The force doesn't, 
because that's a different kind of vector. It doesn't go, it points in the direction A to C, but it doesn't actually go from point A to point C because that's a, that's a distance, not a force magnitude. So we need the actual vector A to C. What is it? Well, we can pick it off the drawing. We're here, we end up here. First, what's the change in the x direction? We were three meters out in the x direction. We already had that. We go another meter farther out in the x direction. So this is uh, one times the x direction i hat. So I'll just put i hat. One times that, one meter, and I'll put the units down there at the end. What's the change in the y direction, if any? Negative two? No, negative three. We're doing the same problem. We should get the same number. Let's see. In the y direction, we're starting out here at A. So we're starting at three meters. We're going back to the y, x, z plane, oh. back to the wall. So we're going to minus three. Minus three j. Take your time on these. If you screw this up, you're doing a different problem. And in the k direction, if any. Minus 2. Minus 2. Agreement, general agreement. You, let's see. In the k direction, which is up or down, we started on the x, uh, sorry, x y plane and we dropped down below it by 2 meters. So we have minus 2. Okay. Meters. Do that carefully. It's very easy to get messed up on these uh, three-dimensional drawings. It's a little easier when you use the book problems because they're so nicely done. They hire graphic artists to do them. We're uh, we're doing cartoons at the board. The magnitude, the distance, actual distance from A to C. How do we find that out? Pythagorean's theorem in three dimensions. Sounds like a Hollywood movie. Pythagorean theorem, 3D. So we gotta get those special little glasses on. Let's see. Uh, so that's the square root of one squared plus three squared. It's actually negative three squared, but when you square it, so we just need the magnitude of the distances in there. And then that, those will each be meters squared, and they'll square root to give us meters. So figure out what that distance is. <coughs> and I think it's 3.75, double check. Then we can come up with that whole unit vector, and then we've got the force magnitude. Figure out the unit vector, and let's double check. Three significant figures, maybe, will be about right. Make sure when you get back to it, you got the uh, minus signs right. We didn't need them because we squared all the terms on the bottom, but we'll need them when we do the whole vector, or the whole point in the right direction. it'll have no units. Unit vector never does. So if you have units coming out of this, you screwed something up. The, uh, the y component has a minus on it. I don't want to forget that. And it's 0 0.802 0 0.8 0.8 
zero two J. Make sure your eyes and your J's don't look alike. Students do that a lot, I've noticed over the years. And then we have another minus sign in the K direction. And 0.535. No? Maybe the third digit is a little bit different from you, but something like that. 535. Okay, don't lose those minus signs. All right, here, we're going to save ourselves a little bit of trouble. Uh, I mean, a, a little bit of work. Save ourselves a little bit of work. We're going to put the unit vector in here. I component 0, 2, 6, 7 minus 0, 8, 0, 2 minus 0, 0.53. Five. But that's the unit vector. I needed the force vector in there. And it's the unit vector times the magnitude. So I'll put the magnitude. No, it was 80. I'll put the magnitude out here. What that means is I don't need to multiply it in here three times. I'll just multiply the whole thing at the end by it once. It just saves a little trouble. Maybe you don't like that though. But I'm just showing you so you, you know that you can do that. That's how matrices work. So we, we can do that. Just like we pull the units out, but it's the units times that whole row. Just pull the magnitude and the units out times that whole row. So it's not trickery or sleight of hand. It's uh, laziness, which most of you can get behind. If, if it doesn't screw us up. If you don't like to do that, don't do it. All right, so we'll do the I vector of the I component first. Get rid of that row. That always happens. Get rid of that column. We have those, and we multiply uh, top to bottom, bottom to top. So we got that. 3 times minus 0535. That's this one minus the other one, but that's a zero, so we're okay. So there's the there's the I component. Notice I, I haven't put in that 80 newtons yet. I'll just do that at the end. Um, minus, remember, the second one's a minus if you want to do your cross multiplication in the same direction. So J, we've got these two, 3 times minus 353, three. hey, that's the same one we had there, 3 times minus 0.535, did I do that right? Yeah, because I had two threes in there, that's why, so they look the same. Uh, so I've got these two, and then I get another zero. Right so far? And then K. Use whatever parentheses you do to keep things clear. So that row, that column, we have just these ones. 3 times the minus 08. 2 minus the other direction. Two six seven three. Oh one two six seven. Is that right? Are we done? Are we done writing stuff down? What I forget? Didn't do the eighty newtons yet, and that's just that's times each one of those terms, but those terms appear each time, so. I guess I need a new bracket for the whole thing, and there's my 80 newtons. You don't have to do it that way if you don't want to, but if you do pull it out, make sure you put it back in. Okay, finish up that, uh, that moment. Let's see if we all get the same thing.
and you can you can kind of tell what it's going to be. It's a little tough in three dimensions, but you at least have sort of a ballpark of where it should point. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get for that. That's just that's just easy uh, arithmetic now, hopefully. See about what you get. Got it? Text Alan, see what he got. He's, he's way too far to talk to. That's why he sits way over there. We should be able to do that. He's right. Yeah, but those are not units. You would never compare numbers without checking units, too, would you? On test on calculator? Usually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, a, you know, you can't hold up your calculator for me and say, see, is this right? Because I can't see what the units are. So you wouldn't want to text each other without units. Oh, I see. Yeah. You always need units. If you've got different units, you're going to have different numbers. Okay. Three significant figures. See how we're doing. Got something? Who did you check with? Trevor With Trevor Soares? Trevor Soares, right, yeah. But he's still going, so what did you check on? Check with Alan. What you got? Oh, BJ will not fall for that trick, because you want to see the units, too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, BJ's no dope. You can't pull that out of him. See that blatant effort to try to sucker BJ into a bad answer? We will not forget this. When we start elections for class president next week, you're not getting the same part of the class president. You get the discontinuity. Oh, okay. That, I mean, that's, that's a shoe with you. That's a bet. That's all I wanted. We got it. Did you, did you check with anybody? Yeah, you, I did. Your boycott. Who did you check with? And everybody pretty much agrees. Don't forget, you've got to check the minus signs. You've got to check each one of the components. And hopefully nobody changed units. That'd be pretty dumb. All right, let's see what we got. First component is going to be negative. What's this come out to be? And then times 80. Negative 127.2. We'll call it 128. Minus 128i. Let's see. Um, would we expect the moment about the x-axis to be negative? I think we would, because it's pulling below the x-axis, so it's going to tend to spin things that way around the x-axis and that would be a negative. So that makes sense. Uh, magnitude, we have to trust our numbers, but we can double check the direction on some of these too, so it's kind of helpful. The next one, we have a negative there, a negative there, and a negative zero. Don't forget the negative zero. So that's also negative. If it is also 128 uh, J and let's see, is that the name? This minus a negative. Oh yeah, we had a, a minus a minus. So that should be plus. Does that make sense from the picture? Let's see, it's it's pulling up as we look down the y-axis. Uh, it's got a little bit of pull down around it, so. It would curl kind of that way around. It's so positive, makes sense for that direction. And be careful with those. You got to kind of contort yourself a little bit. Uh, then what? That's a minus, and that's a minus. So we expect this one to be negative, at least from the arithmetic. We get what? Two fifty-seven. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna call it two fifty-six. Okay, and you'll see why in a second. The units, if any? Units. 
It was this row times that row every single time. It's Newton meters. Newton meters. Or I'm going to make this 128 Newton meters times minus i plus j minus 2k. That's why I rounded it off a little bit. Just slips right out there. Uh, that's the moment. Oh, let's, let's check the, the minus on the k. Does that make sense? Yeah, we're, we're out here away from the z-axis. That's going to tend to spin things back behind the z-axis. We push our thumb down in the minus. So that makes sense. So that makes sense. So there's the moment. We checked each of the component directions as best we can. And is, here's a question. Is this the unit vector of the moment itself? Is that the unit vector of the moment? It, it doesn't have units because those came out here. So is this the magnitude of the moment times the unit vector for the moment? Got a couple no's. Got a. Were you mad at me for even asking? Is that what that face was? Damn you, man! You stop asking me questions, especially hard ones. No, Anna. No, Miss Smith. No. Gladys Smith. That's not the unit vector. Doesn't have units. Unit vectors don't. Does it give direction to the moment vector? It does do that. That's the y, i, j, and k part. Why isn't it the unit? How do you know it's not the unit vector? It's greater than one. Because what? It's greater than one. It, it's, its magnitude is greater than one. So it can't be the unit vector. It's just a vector that happens to point in that direction, uh, but it's not specifically the unit vector itself. Uh, we could come up with that if we need to, because we could do the same thing we did before by figuring out the magnitude and then solving for that, because we've got all those parts. We can figure that out. But it wasn't asked. You just make sure you understand the unit vectors. Okay. Uh, another... Uh, oh, did... Uh, did anybody do this at home and they did R, O, down to maybe point C? Take a couple minutes to do that outside of class, and if you get something different than this, then something went wrong. And I know this one's right, because I checked it and you checked it, lots of people checked it. But do it down to, and show yourself, you just need to hit the line of action of the force somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Do it again. You've got a different RO, but that'll give you a different cross product too, such that you'll come up with the very same answer conveniently. So give that a, a test drive when you got a chance. Um, now, let's see. Let's do something else with it. Um, let's see. I'll keep. Yeah, we don't need all the the work that went into it, now that we have the moment, we just need that. So I can erase all of this. Uh, we'll keep that. So there's our moment now. Now, let's think about this problem we've got here. Uh, this, is, this is a pipe flame. Um, if you don't know what those look like, it's kind of a, a circular thing. And then in the middle, it's got a threaded socket. That doesn't help one a little bit. It's got a <laughs> threaded socket you can screw a pipe into so that the pipe then can be attached to a wall with a, a couple screws. So that's that's the thing. If you look at it right on the side, here's the wall, there's the pipe flange, and we attach it to the wall here, and this 
and it's threaded so we can screw a pipe into there, and then we can attach a pipe right to a wall. Uh, if, if, you, if you see uh, handrails along the stairways or something, it's done this way a lot of times, uh, where they screw it right into the wall. So that's the, that's the type of thing we've got going there. The point being that moment about the y-axis will tell us whether or not that pipe might unscrew. If we, if we have a positive moment about the y-axis, it'll actually unscrew that pipe. It'll tend to loosen it. Maybe it'll loosen it to the point it starts to wobble. And then my mother-in-law using that handrail, she falls, she sues, and I'm not saying sorry, Nana, there. I'm just saying, well, I would have. Oh, sorry, Nana. <laughs> well, you don't feel sympathy for my mother-in-law. So, uh, how do we figure out just what the component of the moment is about the y-axis only? Two ways we can do it. Let's see. Uh, we can dot it with the the vector, the unit vector in that direction. If we dot it with the unit vector in that direction, we will get the component in that direction. So, how do we? Uh, how do we how do we do that? That will that will give us the moment in the y direction only. And if it's positive, we know it's going to unscrew. If it's negative, it'll actually tighten, and that might be what we want. How do we do dot product? The X components times each other, plus the Y components times each other, plus the Z components. What's the, uh, there's the X component of the moment vector, so that times the X component of the J vector, which is zero. zero. There is no component in the X direction for the J vector. So, same thing for the K. So we need the 128 Newton meters times the J component of the J unit vector, which is, which, no, we're multiplying the two J components now. We're dot product, having the dot product of these. We got the J component of the moment, plus 128, there it is right there, I put the units in, times the J component of the J unit vector, which is one. The J unit vector has one magnitude in the X direction. 128 Newton meters. Oh. Well, there it is right there anyway. But we might need a component in a direction that's not one of the ordinal directions, we could still do it this way. If we have some other direction we need to know it in, maybe we want to know it in, the, in some other axis. We'll do a problem in a little bit of that kind of thing. Uh, we just put that vector in here and do the dot product. But if we're using one of the ordinal directions, it just get, that kind of makes sense. In fact, I think you said that when I said, what's the moment about the y-axis only, Alan said, well, there it is right there. Well, that just proves how it works. Just, uh, we can put any unit vector in there, and we'll get the moment component about that direction, whatever it might be for whatever reason. So you can use that uh, as a check. All right. Any questions? Take it. Ten minutes later, and just double check that this works going down to point C from O, and you should get the very, very same thing. So that means the, uh, it's going to loosen? 
Yeah, the, for a right-handed pipe fit, yeah, it'll loosen. Okay. Any questions before I clean up here? We'll do it, no problem. All right. We're having fun drawing in 3D. For those of you who are graduates of technical freehand sketching, this is easy stuff. You're just kind of laughing at it. All right. So here, here's our 3D space again. And that's uh, X, Y, and Z as it was just before. Right-handed coordinate system. And extend the x-axis out in the negative direction uh, because imagine uh, that lines up with a door that is uh, hinged on the x-axis, that's why I put the x-axis there, and uh, is actually up above the x-y plane a little bit. In fact, by 20 degrees. So, a trap door or something. Maybe maybe that's where we, we keep the mother-in-law. <laughs> She's down there. And we decided that uh, she needs a little bit of light, a little bit of air once in a while. My goodness, very demanding. Okay, so there's there's this door that's up above the plane a little bit by 20 degrees. Right? Got that picture? Makes sense? We don't have pipe flanges in this one. They're too challenging to draw. You were about that class I teach you. Yeah, I have to look into that. Okay. Oh, the size of the door. I have that for you. Let's see. Uh, this is 800 millimeters. And uh, uh, something on the other side. I don't have that. We don't need it. So here's there's a hinge, and there's a hinge there too. And since it's almost Halloween, it really creaks. And then you hear the footsteps coming. Alan's not going to sleep tonight. He's going to be thinking of that. Oh no, someone's coming down the stairs, coming to get me. All right, so we want to hold that up there. So we're going to attach a cable or chain or something to one corner and then bolt that back to the wall there to hold this door open. So that'll go, we'll call that point A. That'll go from A to a point back on the wall that is up. 750 and over some amount, uh, 850 millimeters again. So it goes up 750 and over 850, and that's millimeters again. And then that's where the uh, That's where the chain attaches. So it's going to look something like that. And um, the cable there can withstand five hundred millimeters. Okay. So there's point A. Here's the origin. Back corner of the, the other side of the hinge is C and our attachment point is 
used to be, just for reference. I don't like you to name those points yourself, not because it changes the physics, it just makes it harder for us to talk about things. Yep. See at the corner of the door or at the hinge? Uh, yes. <laughs> so what we Remember, we don't know how long the door is, so we don't know where point C is anyway. It's just for general reference direction. Uh, find out the moment about what, uh, yeah, let's do the moment about that that line OC or the moment about the x-axis. Okay, we can get that by figuring out the whole moment um, which would be maybe O to A or O to B doesn't really matter which. Figure out the whole moment and then dotting that with the OC unit vector. That'll give us the magnitude. Sorry, dot product will not give us a vector. That'll give us the magnitude of the moment about that OC. And if it has a negative sign on it or a positive sign, then we know which way it turns about that direction OC. Right? That'll work. This actually happens to be here. What? Hmm? What is just this part here? What is it? it yeah, it's a cross product, but what's if we did that cross product, what would it give us? What would we have there? That'd be the full moment about the origin if R goes from O to A, simply because that's an attachment point for the force vector. I could do O to B as well. It's not going to make any difference. Dotted with, what's that? What? What's the unit vector from O to C? Can we can we come up with that? We're going to need to if we want to do the dot product with it. Just the unit vector in the x direction. Nope. Sorta O to C is in the minus x direction. This is actually minus i half. We'll need that minus sign because that will give us the direction of the moment. What is it? Phone call for me? I left a message at doctor asking you to call on a prescription for orange Tylenol. Orange. It's the only kind you can't taste in his bottle. Of course, you won't be able to get it until tonight. Okay, we didn't answer it unless you have a break today. <laughs> okay, so, so what? I need to go to the drugstore for it. Yeah, the, the, the ringer is off, but just for some reason, when I get messages, it's still not Because there. it was from your doctor. All right. That makes sense. Will that work? Let's see, you know, the minus signs should work out, too. So, we, you can tell what direction this is going to be. It should pull the door up some more. It should actually be a positive moment about the x-axis, but let's see if that's what we get with the minus sign in there. Okay, let's, see. let's, let's set up the cross bottom. In fact, if somebody else would like to do O to B, we can compare them. 
Maybe I should split the room in half. The three good students. No? You, just, you, you don't want to work with them? Or you're not a good student? Or against the three great students? Against the best student. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Who likes evidently to sit as far away from everybody else as he possibly can. So if somebody wants to do volunteer to o, do O B, it's just gonna change the mathematics a little bit. Doesn't change things greatly. Let's see what we get. Let's see. O to A. Let's see in the uh, in the x direction, that's zero. It doesn't go anywhere in the x direction. In the j direction, that's the y direction, it's actually going to be that component there. So whatever that comes out to be, anybody have to have it already? I think it's, a, I think it's 725. Is that right? Because it's 800 times the cosine of 20. 752. 752? Yeah, we get it wrong. Oh, yeah, 752. And that's millimeters. And then in the z direction, I think it's uh, 274. And that's in millimeters. And then you need to figure out the force vector itself. Which is A to B. Magnitude's easy, that was given, that's the 500 newtons, but you need the direction A to B. So you have to figure out that unit vector as well. And that's going to be the vector A to B over the magnitude A to B. Sound correct? And if you did, uh, did an O to B, well that won't affect the force, I mean that would just affect that middle position vector. So, figure out that one, see what you get. vector, then we'll double check them. Vector, maybe even do the whole cross product, and then you know um, to just dot it with the minus i direction.
don't have to do it that way. But you can if uh, that's what works for you. Yep. For the vector AB, because uh, yeah. I've already got the vector RO OA. Yeah, so o you were doing B? Yeah. Oh, you volunteered to do B for it. Yeah, vector OB would be uh, uh, minus 850i, and all in millimeters, 0 watt J, and plus 750k. So that was actually an easier vector to come up with, yeah. O to B than O to A was. But it will we'll double check. Now let's see. Then the vector A to B is minus 850 in the I direction. Millimeters. In the J direction, let's see, what are we doing? A to B. Uh, minus, oh, that's the, uh, in the J direction? No, it goes from here back to the wall. So it's actually this distance, which was the 752, but we're going backwards. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, so minus 752 J. And then if we go up, uh, well, we were up 274. Now we go up to 750 in the Z direction, which is 476 plus 476. Okay. And that's uh, millimeters. That looked right for the vector A to B, the position vector B relative to A, which which both parties need, whether you use a different R or not, bless you. And then the magnitude, 1231, and that's also millimeters since uh, they cancel, and that's the distance from A to B. And that's always positive, because distance is always positive. So that should give us the entire force vector that we can then put in here. Well, I don't have to have it written down to the 500 pulled out. So. Put it back in. And then we got to go. So we'll get those numbers, then you can finish the cross product. Uh, minus 345. This is Newton's. Minus 350. I'm sorry, 305. Does that sound right? Anybody have these to confirm? And plus 193. Minus 345, minus 305, minus, uh, plus 193. That's the force vector itself. Okay, so we can do the cross product. Chris is doing the cross product where we don't go to point A, we go to point B, and we'll see if we get the same thing. If not, it's his fault.